I have uh, determined that the servo motor was bad. Uh, I basically did that by getting another servo motor and uh, plugging plugging it in, in here, and the other servo motor has turn was turning properly. Uh, so I replaced it. This is now a new servo motor. We'll turn this on and see how it works. Okay, so you saw that when it detected an obstacle in front of the distance sensor, uh, it rotated that way, and then it took a measurement, and then it rotated back here, took a measurement, and then it rotated even further around. So now we know that this position that it's in right now, it should be looking, it should be looking forward. Uh, but it isn't. Um, and that's because when we put this bracket on, we didn't know what position the servo motor was in. But now we know that this is the position where it should be looking forward. So I'm going to take this screw out. Take the bracket off, and as you can see, if you didn't notice before, I have a very tiny screw uh, in here to make sure that this stays aligned uh, with the bracket. And now we are going to try to get this pointed as forward as possible. Uh, you don't have to be exactly pointing forward. It can be off just slightly um, and that will happen anyway because of the way the tines are on the servo motor. Put the screw back in here. Come on. Tighten it down. You can see the. You can turn the servo motor like this, um, and it won't make a difference because the servo motor knows where its center is. So we can turn it all the way like that, and then when we turn it on, it will recenter itself. So you can see it's happily chugging along, going forward. It hits an obstacle. It looks one way. It looks the other way. It turns, and then it, oh, it's checking again, it turns, and then it keeps moving. So that is a working obstacle avoidance car.